Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Metronic. In this video, we'll discuss on the how to maintain your plugins within Metronic using Webpack. So let's get right into it. The first thing we need to note is you of course need to purchase and download Metronic and also you need to know how to install and build your Metronic demos. Now once you've done all that, what you have uh, on your computer will look something like this. You have all your um, files, your theme files with a default with all the demos already built. So in this, uh, in this video, we'll talk about demo one and how you can manage your plugins uh, using the Webpack uh, method. So first, let's look into demo one and let's look into our tools. Now in our tools, we have a Webpack um, folder. So if you click on that, you have basically a vendors folder and also you have scripts and styles. So if you want to create a new plugin or you want to add a new plugin into uh, Metronic, you need to consider two things. Uh, the first thing to consider is whether your plugin will be a global plugin. And the second thing is if your plugin will be a, a single page plugin. What do we mean by global and single page is if it's a global plugin, um, the plugin will be utilized or basically be included into the global bundle of uh, the third party vendor scripts and it will be loaded onto every single page of your project. If it's a single page, it will just be loaded on that single page. Now, to demonstrate an example of that, if you go to our index or HTML and if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you notice a few uh, include files. We have the global team bundle, which is this. Uh, this is basically all the plugins from uh, Metronic bundled into a single JS file called plugins.bundle. And we have scripts or page um, bundles. Page bundles are basically just a uh, single page bundle. So what it means is, for example, like this full calendar or even Google Maps, all these um, scripts are being loaded in the index or HTML only. And if you want to include it in another page, we just have to re-include this line of code. And of course, we have this as well, which is just a single uh, script that we've created for this specific page. But what we need to discuss is actually this, the main, uh, the main source bundles or the main source files from your plugins. So now in this video, we discuss, uh, so we discuss two things, add uh, plugins into your, uh, met into Metronic and also how do we remove. We start off by how do we remove and then we move on on how to re-add uh, the plugin that we just removed so it's easier to uh, showcase how it's done. All right, so first thing we need to know is, like I said, do we want to add and remove a global and or a single page plugin? All right, so as mentioned, we have a set of global plugins and we have a set of single page plugins. Now all the global plugins are actually located within the Webpack folder and you op uh, basically open a Webpack folder, you open the vendors and then you have a global.js right here and you click on that and basically all these plugins here like um, the bootstrap, uh, block UI and stuff like that gets pushed into the plugins.bundle. Now what's important here is this basically this set of plugins, which doesn't have a, uh, like a comment or a line on top of it. Like there's nothing here. What this means is these are third party plugins that are technically mandatory for Metronic to work. If you remove things, something like bootstrap, obviously Metronic will stop working. So we highly recommend for you guys to not touch any of this unless you guys know what you're doing. Basically the next plugins after that, like, toaster, tooltips and stuff like that. These are all optional plugins. Optional plugins, um, uh, you're allowed to remove them from the global bundle. And once you've done, all you, all you need to do is just recompile Metronic and that's it. Uh, you don't really need to do anything else. Uh, of course, maybe you, sh maybe you might want to remove the script file, the script initialization file from your HTML to make sure that it doesn't load a, uh, a, a plugin that doesn't exist. So 
as an example of how we can remove a plugin, let's go ahead and remove, let's say we want to remove something that's obvious to be removed. Uh, let's see, let's just look at our demo and we'll decide which, um, which file we would like to, uh, or which page we'd like to remove. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to maybe forms, widgets, okay, date range picker. So, right, let's see if this is a global uh, plugin. Let's do a quick search for date. Yeah, there you go, date range picker. So, as you can see, if you want to remove a, uh, a global plugin, all you have to do is just delete this. Uh, like so save the file and then locate that HTML file so that we don't load a broken or a, a script that doesn't exist. So to locate the files, go back to our demo and look for it's in the CRUD forms widget. So let's go to this CRUD forms widgets and date range picker right here. And as you can see, it's loading uh, our global uh, bundle, which we do not have to re uh, remove simply because if we remove that, all these other things will be gone, which we don't want to. We just need to recompile it later. But what we need to remove is this thing right here, basically is a script that initializes the, the, the plugin. So let's go ahead and remove that and save this. Oh, maybe I should just remove the comment as well to keep it clean. Save that and now we need to uh, recompile Metronic. To do that, it is similar to with all the other ways of doing it. Just open up the command prompt and type in npm run build. All right, it's done building. Uh, let's go ahead and just double check our HTML if we have any CSS for our plugin. No, we don't. Okay, so so let's go back into our demo. This is our demo. Refresh this. And as you can see, the page is working, but the plugin is no longer working because we just removed the plugin. So that's an example of how you can remove a plugin from the global bundle. So now, now for the next thing we want to um, try is to remove a single page plugin. So an example of a single page plugin is Let's look for perhaps maybe some charts. Yeah, flood charts. Okay, so this is a plugin. It's a page that uses the plugin called flood chart. And what we need to, what you want to do here is you want to remove it. So to remove it, we just have to go to our webpack, go under custom, under your vendors, under custom. There'll be flood right here and all you need to do is actually just delete the entire file. You don't need it at all. And uh, you can actually just right click and delete. But we don't want to do that because we want to re-add this later. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to comment everything out like so. Right, and all I do is save that and then locate that HTML file. And to do that, we look at the URL as usual, it's under components, charts, flowchart. Let's go to our ID. Let's go look for components, charts, whoops, charts, flowcharts. And as you can see, this is our bundle for our single page bundle and our initialization app uh, script. And just delete that, save it, rerun or recompile Metronic. Oops, it's npm run build. All right, that's done. So let's go ahead and look into our page. And if you refresh, as you can see, the page is still working, but the plugin is no longer being initialized. Uh, therefore, it doesn't work, nothing. Basically, all the charts are not working at all. So this is essentially how easy it is to remove plugins from Metronic and just recompiling it and your assets will be updated with the new asset. There will be the new list of assets minus what you just removed.
Now, next we want to discuss is how we can um, add plugins into Medtronic. Again, it's also fairly simple. All you need to do is decide um, what do you want to include or where do you want to recruit rather. Do you want to include it globally or is it just a single page plugin? If it's a global plugin, you go to back to your global uh, global.js and add it like at the bottom here or anywhere else that you want to add. For example, we want, in this example, we want to uh, re-add the date time, uh, date range, date range picker. So all we need to do is just type in require, right? And this will be the path of your uh, plugin. Okay, there's two things. One is either is a path of your plugin or the plugin name or the plugin package name that comes with like comes from npm or yarn. So what we mean by uh, package name is some plugins you can actually get it off um, npm or yarn. So to do that, all you need to do is just like type in yarn, add, and then the package name, something like that. Enter, and then you will basically install the plugin into your node modules folder. And a node modules folder will be usually located in the tools folder right here. So let's open that up. And in this example, we want to re-add date range picker, right? So let's look for that. So let's look for not this one. Let's look for range picker. There you go, right here. And here we have, as you can see, we have actually a CSS file and a JS file. Now the JS file, usually we don't really need to include it because it comes with the package. So all we need to do is include the package name, which is bootstrap bit range picker. Like so. And also we need to include any CSS files that may be required. And once you're done, it should look something like this. You have your CSS, which is this, and then you have the package name, uh, yep, which is the package name. So add your plugins back in. Now, sometimes your plugins may require more, uh, more initialization. For example, sometimes a plugin may require you to assign the plugin into a into a object or a class like so so if you require to do that then go ahead and do that but some most of the time we may not need to so once you've done that or uh, save your global.js uh, your webpack global file or global config go back into the html like so and save that. So let's go ahead and recompile. All right, let's refresh our date range picker, which is under where was it? Forms widgets date range picker. Oh, it's okay, it's now working again. So that's how you add stuff back into uh, Metronic as a global plugin. You just have to add your uh, initialization script and recompile Metronic's uh, let's recompile Metronic's assets. And what Metronic will do is just rebuild this plugin stuff bundle, and everything that you've added into the global config file will be included into that bundle file. Now, how do, we re, uh, how do we add a single page plugin? It's also very similar. All we need to do is, let's minimize that. Uh, minimize, oh, let's not minimize this yet. Let's go remove this. Scroll all the way down to our tools. And what we need to do is we need to add a new JS file into our uh, custom folder within our Webpack vendors. And we need to add it in this specific format. You will have, um, wait, you don't really need this um, title here, but it's always good to have. But what you definitely need is this 
uh, at output uh, parameter. What it does is this will define this file to compile this plugin into this specific bundle file. It doesn't matter whether it's CSS or JS, Webpack will automatically just do its thing and that's it. Uh, it will split your CSS to bundle.css and your JS to bundle.js. So all you need to do is basically add your required files or require all your files like so. How do you locate all these files is similar with uh, before. Go to float, oops. Uh, there is it, F here. And then if you go to dist, you see, let's close this, yep. You see jQuery float, this is the main uh, uh, float. And then in source, you see all the other um, sources that uh, this float chart has. And for Metroid, we are only using this specific few. We have only resize categories, pi, and so on, and, and so on. And if you want to add more, you can just add more, require, and make it work. So once you've added all your um, required scripts into your uh, your your single page as your single page plugin, all you need to do now is you just need to uh, run or save this file, of course, and then uh, compile. Uh, compile Metronic. So just run npm run build again. All right. So let's add it back in. Like so save that and refresh our flowchart. Refresh that, and it's back in. Everything's working fine. So that's it for this video. I hope you found this uh, video informative. Give us a thumbs up if you did. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that next time we um, complete or release a new video, you get, a, you get an update. Uh, please follow, on, follow us on our social media. So like uh, Twitter, Facebook, and stuff like that. Links will be in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.